So the next scenario I want to run by you and get your opinion on is the trauma patient which doesn't arrive in a major trauma centre but that finds him or herself in a district general hospital. With regards to this, which sort of patients that arrive in a DGH necessitate the need for transfer to a major trauma centre and which ones would um, you as a trauma lead in a trauma centre expect a district general hospital to be able to manage themselves? That's another really great question. I think it's um, something that nationally we're struggling a little bit uh, about. The reality is that with the potential move uh, towards 60-minute uh, bypass times for trauma patients, unless they're catastrophically unstable, yeah, the majority of major trauma patients are going to bypass the district general hospitals and go to uh, the major trauma centre. If there's any doubt at all about them. So yeah, these are patients who have some physiological sign or a torso injury um, that the pre-hospital criteria, physiology or the fact that they've got a penetrating torso wound would dictate they should go to the major trauma centre. If they don't and they end up in a, a, trauma, uh, a trauma unit or a district general hospital, I think that's that's really challenging to know which one should stay and which one should, should go depending on the, the experience of the surgeons there and their background. Would we expect every uh, injury spleen to come to a uh, major trauma centre? No, not necessarily. I'm sure you know, they have been managed very well. But anything that's polytrauma, where there's more than one uh, organ injured, or there's more than one body system injured, so certainly come to us. And I would su suggest that people who are unstable initially in physiology, you know, as a rule of thumb, should end up in a major trauma centre, not purely you know, for the surgical skills. The fact is that we... Uh, we wrap around a, a, an awful lot of the other support services and clinicians around the patient and, and the outcome in major trauma is not necessarily about the surgeon who does a great operation, it's about the rest of the team, uh, the physios, the, the um, nursing staff that we have here, rehab, health care of the older person, it's those people that make the real difference and you get people back to functional, uh, functional outcomes. So I would err on the side of referring into an MTC patients who are unstable or have significant injury. Sorry, I'm not going to be asking, I'm not going to give you a, a more definitive answer, but the nationally everyone's struggling with the same question. <laughs> That's absolutely fine, Inky. Um, just to take that on another step, if a patient finds themselves in a district general hospital that perhaps sh should have been uh, transported directly to a major trauma centre, and the decision has been made to transfer them over to a major trauma centre, would you like a CT scan to be performed where they are currently at the District General Hospital, or would you prefer to do it all yourselves um, when they get to you? Okay, well that depends if it's going to delay their care. And there's two groups of patients. There's the patient who has obvious injuries that doesn't, that doesn't need a scan, that's physiologically unstable or physiologically you know, abnormal, who obviously need to come to the major trauma centre, and they should come straight to the major trauma centre and shouldn't be delayed for a scan. It's likely you know, that we will be able to get the patient to us and through the scan before uh, most trauma units have the result ready, yeah, before most trauma units even have the patient through the CT scan, just because that's what we're set up to do. So I wouldn't want patients to be delayed for a CT, you know, for a CT scan. Different group of patients, however, those who it's not obvious that they're going to need to come to the major trauma centre. Their injuries aren't obvious, but there's a suspicion of their injuries. And their, you know, physiologically, their numbers are normal or within you know, reasonable parameters. That group, um, it would be appropriate to image in the trauma unit of the district general hospital so that we've got a clear idea of their injuries. There's no reason to send someone who, on imaging, hasn't got any image injuries to the major trauma centre. So patient stable, no obvious injuries are going to mandate them being transferred, I'd suggest they get a CT scan. But a patient who has obvious injuries and physiologically abnormal, don't, don't delay um, getting the patient to the, M the major trauma sensor uh, if a CT is not immediately available. Great, thank you. Uh, so next I'd like to ask whether a patient with a gunshot abdomen mandates a laparotomy. Or are there perhaps a cohort of these type of patients um, which you would 
consider observing conservative management? Uh, again, I'm going to give you a really uh, short answer. Uh, in the UK, gunshot abdomen, yeah, mandatory laparotomy. Because people will see so few in the in the entirety of their careers, then I think that we don't have necessarily that ability to effectively evaluate them. Now that's slightly different. You know, would I always do that? Does you know, one rule for me, one rule for someone else? Not necessarily. If I found somebody who was completely unstable and had two wounds in close proximity proximity and clinically it looked like they'd completely missed the abdomen and it was a low energy transfer weapon rather than a military style weapon i would be tempted to get a ct scan again with my bullet markers to show the trajectory and there are certain members of the population who have more padding more subcutaneous fat than other people and we do see people see some of those who have through and through wounds which actually don't breach the peritoneum at all so that group, you know, I would manage in a totally different way. We wouldn't get a laparotomy. And if it's clear of the peritoneum, my management would be to give the wounds a bit of a clean, some antibiotics and send them home. But I think that's very much the exception to the rule. And the, and the rule that should apply to people who don't see tr- gunshot wounds on a regular basis is abdominal gunshot wound, laparotomy every time. Great, thanks. Um, and the final question... Uh, quite a specific one actually is regarding patients with bowel evisceration so this could be a small amount of bowel or quite a large amount of bowel outside of the abdominal wall Um, so if a patient comes into the department with bowel evisceration from trauma and they're stable with a soft abdomen but unfortunately the theatre is busy at the moment there's another urgent case Um, they're probably going to be tied up for a few hours is there anything you could do in the meanwhile or how would you how would you manage this type of patient um, before theatre could become available for you? Uh, Fortunately, not a situation uh, we find ourselves in very often. We have a huge number of uh, operating uh, theatres available to us, uh, I guess, compared to some uh, institutions. I would simply you know, put in a warm, damp swab. Technically, you could try to um, uh, replace it into the, into the abdomen, but, you know, it's unlikely that uh, it's eviscerated to a very narrow uh, opening. It's unlikely to run into any problems over the hour or two um, that it's likely to get this patient to theatre. They're a CPOD uh, one. You should be looking at doing them within an hour. You know, within an hour, if you can't, then there should be another team to come in because that bound does need to be replaced. But also, you can't tell what else has happened. So... Although you can see it in what may be a healthy piece of bowel in front of you, you don't know what else has happened in the abdomen. So uh, you, you need to knock on the door and get the patient into uh, into the operating room. Yeah, absolutely. So fortunately, a situation we don't find ourselves in very often here. Um, so just to summarise the podcast then. So we've been through some of the key practical points regarding the management of abdominal trauma patients. And we've touched upon some of the principles of ATLS along the way. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com and finally by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much and see you next time.